Welcome to Wave 2024. Also from my side, welcome. I couldn't be more excited to see so many customers, so many partners, so many friends, investors, and Paloans here today at our own first conference. Today, it will be a lot about advancements in AI. It will be about great stories of our customers, great stories about our partners, and obviously, it will also be about Palua Amp. And in the next 60 minutes, we want to guide you through a journey of probably the biggest change in customer interaction ever. Because once in a while, there is a revolutionary technology coming that changes everything. Just think of the internet and how it changed how we interact with companies via websites or via an email. Or think about the smartphone and how it revolutionized how we connect with the world through apps and messengers. We believe AI is on the same level as the internet and the smartphone, if not a bit more relevant. And one of the first outcomes of AI are AI agents. AI agents your customers can talk to. We believe in the future, every company will have an AI agent, not just a website, not just an app. And this AI agent will probably be even more relevant than your homepage or your app. AI agents that are 24-7 available, they can speak any language. They are always friendly, empathetic, and helpful. They know all about the customer's history, and they know a lot about your company to answer questions. And the cool thing is, those are AI agents your customers can just talk to in the most natural way. And that's why we believe that there will be a 10x increase in customer interactions in the next years. It will be the biggest transformation of customer experience we have ever seen. And as you have seen in the video, we believe that the leaders of this era will provide personal AI agents for every customer. Personal AI agents that are there for your customers when your customers need them. And everything will start with customer support. Why? Because customer support still is pretty broken. We probably all know that a bit. Everyone in that process is a bit frustrated. Customers, if we, if we call a company, we still, in a lot of cases, need to go through a touchstone IVR. Please press 1 for A, please press 2 for B, please press 3 for C, and so on. Then we need to wait in line for 10, 15 minutes, and then we might get to an agent that needs to forward us. Agents are frustrated. Customer support is one of the industries with the highest burnout rate. It's very tough to find agents, and as companies, we are frustrated because it's very tough to deliver great customer support experiences. And in the past, companies tried to create better customer experience increase efficiency with deflection. Companies build awesome FAQ pages, nice self-service portals, and some companies were pretty good in hiding their telephone number as good as possible so that no one can find the number. In the era of generative AI, it's the end of deflection. In the era of generative AI, we talk about connections. 
the more connections you have as a company, the more likely you will win. And how do you get to create connections? By having conversations. By having conversations with your customers, you get to know them. You can understand them. And the more conversations you have, the more likely you will succeed in the market. And the more conversations you will have, the more you will know your customer. Because the overall goal is that every conversation can be as unique as your customers are. Because we believe every customer interaction can be as easy as talking to a friend. Now, I want to take one step back. How did we actually get there? Making people's lives easier has been at the core of Palua since we founded Palua in 2018. Since then, we automated billions of interactions. We pushed the boundaries of what's possible with AI together with you again and again. We got rid of touch on IVRs. We heavily decreased long waiting times. And we overcame language barriers. However, there was still one problem, or actually several problems, because voice automation is not easy. So we invented things like contextual listening, contextual speech-to-text and speech-to-text hints, echo cancellation. However, we wanted always to get to human-like experiences. But that was tough. I still remember one day in summer 2019, we still were at a small office here in Berlin-Kreuzberg, just 15 desks. We were on a very successful project, and my co-founder Stefan approached me. And Stefan said, Malte, with the technology out there, we are not going to get to human-like experiences. We needed a scientific breakthrough. Until then, we spent a lot of time trying to understand what is the scientific progress, what is happening. But over two, three years, not a lot has happened. And then 2022 came. In 2022, there was one day, I can remember it as it were yesterday, I got a WhatsApp from Stefan again. Late at night, it was a Friday night, and he was more excited than normal. And he said, Malte, there was a new paper from OpenAI coming out. Let's call. And as that was the start of why we are standing here today, I went to WhatsApp, tried to find the chat again. That's actually what he wrote, a lot of emojis, and like he wanted to really talk to me. So this was the paper he was linking. Um, it was an OpenAI paper. The title was Training Language Models to Follow Instructions with Human Feedback. And it was the start of the large language models we know today. And then there was November 30th, 2022. Some of you might remember that day. If you don't remember the day, at least you remember the weeks after that day. On that day, OpenAI launched ChatGBT. So 2022 was the year of scientific breakthroughs. However, large language models were still very expensive. They were slow. Sometimes it took 20 to 30 seconds in order to get to an answer. And they were not good enough to actually solve customer support queries. But that was the moment we have been waiting for. So we made a bold bet. We made a bold bet to start building what was needed to unlock the full power of conversational AI. We wanted to challenge the status quo of conversational AI. We didn't want to be in an innovator's dilemma and just do business as usual. And after more than 18 months of hard work, of pushing the boundaries day after day, 
week after week. After inventing things that have never been invented before, I'm more than excited, thankful, and happy to officially at WAVE 2024 announce AMP. A whole new category of software, an AI agent management platform that helps you to manage an unlimited team of autonomous AI agents. Because at enterprise scale, you need a set of tools that are perfectly tailored to each other in order to help you designing, integrating, testing, simulating, evaluating, deploying, scaling, monitoring, improving, and everything you need to manage an unlimited team of autonomous AI agents. So before talking about AMP even more, let's call AMP. Let's call Christy, the AI agent of Kronos Jet, an airline company we developed for this demo purposes only. And uh, let's have a, have a chat. Welcome to Kronos Jet. My name is Christy, your personal AI agent. How can I help you today? Hello, Christy. Um, I'm currently in Berlin and I need to fly to New York uh, as soon as possible. I have a pretty exciting customer meeting coming up on Monday. Can you um, help me with that? Oh, that's wonderful news about your meeting. Sounds like a huge opportunity for you. I can certainly help you find the earliest flight from Berlin to New York. Um, one moment, please. Sure. I've found a direct flight for you. It departs from Berlin Brandenburg Airport today at 7.20 p.m. and arrives at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York at 10 p.m. The total duration is... Um, eight hours and 40 minutes, and the price is $437. Does this flight work for you? Uh, that might be a bit difficult, actually, because I'm currently standing on stage at our own conference in front of 400 people. So could you look for a flight uh, tomorrow between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m.? Oh, that sounds absolutely amazing. Speaking in front of 400 people at your own conference is quite an achievement. Congratulations. Um, let me check for a flight tomorrow morning between um, 8 and 11 o'clock. I've found a flight for you tomorrow morning. It departs from Berlin Brandenburg at 9.50 a.m. and arrives at Newark Liberty International at 12.50 p.m. The flight duration is um, nine hours and the price is even cheaper. It's $329. Does this flight work for you? Uh, yeah, that flight works for me, um, but before we go on, can you give me a bit more information on the loud carry-on luggage uh, on the flight? Let me check our latest carry-on allowances for you. Um, just give me a second. Sure. Okay, so you may bring one piece of carry-on baggage, which should not exceed 21 by 9 by 15 inches, and one personal item, which should not exceed 16 by 6 by 13 inches. Should I continue booking your flight? Yeah, let's continue, but before that, can you send me the information on the allowed carry-on luggage to my uh, number I'm calling from? Um, and please do it in centimeters, I'm not so good in, in inches. Yeah, sure. I'll send you a text with the measurements in centimeters to this number. All right, the text is sent. To finalize your booking, I need to authenticate you. Um, could you please tell me your phone number and your four-digit Kronos PIN? Uh, it's the same number I'm calling from, and my Kronos pin is 2427. Great. I will use your credit card information on file. Um, just to summarize the details before booking. Departure, Berlin Brandenburg, on September 13th at 9.50 a.m. Arrival, Newark Liberty International, on the same day at 12.50 p.m. Duration, nine hours. Price, $329. Is that all right? Should I book the flight now? Yeah. Let's book it. Good. One second, please. All right. Your flight is now booked. You will receive a confirmation email shortly. Good luck with your conference, and um, fingers crossed for the meeting on Monday. 
One more thing. Um, there are a lot of Germans in the, in the audience. Could you repeat the last uh, response in German for me? Klar, kein Problem. Ich habe gesagt, Ihre Buchung ist bestätigt. Sie erhalten in Kürze eine Bestätigung per E-Mail. Viel Erfolg mit Ihrer Konferenz und ähm, Daumen sind gedrückt für das Meeting am Montag. Dankeschön. So pretty impressive, right? If you want to test it yourself, we have a lot of booths with partners out there. You can feel it yourself in the break, so feel free to do that. However, now I'm excited to welcome on stage my co-founder and CTO, Stefan, who will guide you through the technical details of Paloa real quick. Stefan. Well, I've spoken to Christy so often already, but every time I hear that, my heart's just, be, uh, just bumping. It's, it's just a different thing. But let's dive into this. Let's look at why can Christy solve these cases? Why, how does Christy book that flight? And as so often with AI, it's helpful to start with a human analogy. Think back, you have a role open and you want to hire somebody. What do you look for? You look for skills. Does that person have the skills you need? The same is true for AI agents. When you select an AI agent, you think, does that AI agent actually have the skill to do my job? So in Paloa, we center everything around skills. Skills are predefined capabilities which you can easily import into your AI agents. When you think back a bit, maybe you remember the matrix, Neo, when he was hooked up to, to that machine and they uploaded a new skill to him. And he said, I know Kung Fu. In Paloa, it's quite similar. Except you don't have to insert a weird metal bar into somebody else's set, but you can simply press a button. And the skill and all the experience beneath that is automatically integrated into your AI agent. We come out of the box with several skills already. The first one is routing. Routing allows you to understand what the customer wants, ask the somebody in questions, clarifying questions if needed, and, if the case is so, forward it to the right human agents. To do, the, to do so, you describe in natural language, just like you would do for a human, when you need to forward it to which extension. And then, of course, share where to forward it to. The second one is knowledge. Knowledge allows you to provide all the rich knowledge you have in your company and provide it to your customers calling in. You can do so by using the built-in content management system, and of course, you can also import your existing knowledge using CSVs, PDFs, and of course, also APIs. Talking about APIs, this leads me to the third skill, the custom skill. You have all kinds of use cases, all kinds of backends to connect, all kinds of locations to retrieve data from, and all kinds of different flows you want to enable um, the customer to, be, uh, to help them solve it. And this is what you can do with custom skills. To do so, you simply upload your spec, and you can define what kind of parameter do you need, which can be simple, like setting an option, but can be also complex instructions, like give me a summary of my conversation so far. To me, the custom skill created one of these moments when you look back like, wow. And it was my colleague Peter. We were just about to leave for a lunch break. And he said, ah, you know what, I, I'm just going to stay. I want to try something out. OK, all right. So we came back. And what he did was he inserted a text message API. So he gave Christy the general capability of sending text messages, just that. 
And all of a sudden, you were able to ask all kinds of questions, like we've just seen with Maldi. You can ask it for, hey, can you just forward my booking number um, to my mobile phone? C can you send me my last uh, uh, luggage information to my phone? You didn't need to ma map any of this one out. It's just that general skill would all of a sudden enable that. And that within such a short time. And the crazy thing is, you can build this now too. So it's an exciting time ahead of us. And of course, more skills are coming. The skills you can think of, um, general skills like authentication, but also industry-specific ones like Wismo for e-commerce or um, claim management for insurances. So we're really working hard to provide you all these capabilities out of the box. What we've looked at so far is an individual AI agent. The behavior of the AI agent. But what you see from the outside is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot beneath that. Foundational things, but also workflows to enable you to provide that successful experience. I want to start with the very bottom. And the bottom is, as you all work in enterprises, you well know that. Because it centers around core enterprise needs, around scalability, security, data privacy, compliance, and so much more. And why do you care? Because you want to provide a reliable and safe experience to your customers. The good thing is, we do that too. We want this too. And so we've done the last six years, actually, so this is way older, build an enterprise infrastructure and provide an AI-first uh, telephony infrastructure to really deliver that. So your conversations are your data. They're not used to train the next GPT of OpenAI. Your conversations are safe. Also, with all the new parts we see from special needs from AI, for example, guardrails to protect yourself um, from, from prompt attacks. So all this is the foundation, the enterprise foundation. The first level above this is AI model and data orchestration. Now, what do we mean by that? You can think of it, again, along a human. What does a human need to do to solve cases? The human needs to listen, needs to think, and needs to talk. Let's go through the chain of thought step by step. Listening. You need to understand your customer in order to really solve their problem. However, even though latest speech-to-text models still struggle to understand people when they are in the environment of a phone, where the quality is so much worse. So what we've done is create phone-optimized speech-to-text models, which really understand also special cases, um, for example, um, numbers. And as Martin mentioned before, of course, we enable also speech-to-text hints, which provide you the capability so to, to share what are your, for example, what are your, um, your product names? Because if a customer reaches out about your product, you better want to understand um, which product they are talking about. So that's listening. The second part is thinking. Thinking explains what is needed, what do you need to plan in order to create a conversation which actually resolve that problem. The reality is that conversations are messy. They go left and right. They're not straightforward. They have side questions and have follow-up um, clarifications. And it's not so easy to stay that on track. Large language models are great in many ways. They are especially great in answering, a, a, a res, like responding to a direct questions. Like we all know with ChatGPT, you ask something and there's a finished response. What they're not so good at is having goal-directed dialogue. Don't fall into these traps of these side conversations, but in, explain them, solve them, but then get it back, drive that conversation to a successful case resolution. 
And so with Palo AMP, you get the capabilities out of the box to reach these goals across all these turns. So help on the side, but strive the conversation to make it successful. The last aspect is talking. And talking is so much more than just talking. Talking is the entire audio experience the customer um, experiences. So I want to dive in for two minutes about this topic. Because in order to provide that experience, we've done a lot of research how, how to solve this. How, what, what are the, actually the needs to create that feeling? The first thing is ambient sounds, so playing background sounds. So you set the conversation into a general setting, into a mood you're in, which creates a much different um, experience from the start. The second thing is recognition sounds, which indicates when the AI agent was successfully understanding you and is processing things. And finally, it's thinking sounds. When you notice a request takes longer than usually, and bridging that, that time you need, for example, for your backend calls to really get that data. And when we are talking about talking, of course, there is one important thing, which is the voice itself. As many of you know already, Paloa, we have already integrated the great voices of Microsoft, Azure, and OpenAI. And I'm happy to announce to you today that with AMP, directly out of the box will also come 11 labs. And as you also know, Paloa, all this great functionality is just as great when you can make it accessible, when you are enabled to use this. So all this is easily cho choosable in the UI, the languages, the voices, and also the entire experience you want to set around it. It comes with pre-built sounds, but of course you can also customize it to your dedicated brand experience. So this is AI model and data orchestration. In this metaphor of the iceberg, there's one layer missing now. It's AI agent lifecycle management. Because you want to build it, you have the entire process around it to really deliver this. Well, there are many steps I want to highlight here three. Quality assurance, performance tracking, and capacity management. Quality assurance answers how do you ensure that AI agents are sticking to their tasks and stay on brand? Let's take the human analogy again. What does a human do when they learn a new skill? They practice for hours, for days. An AI agent, they simulate. The difference is that simulating you can do in minutes, and you have hundreds of conversations. As a next step, what do you do? You look at your, your experiences. You reflect them. We also call this evaluation. Evaluation will come by the end of this year. So instead of you doing that yourself, then, another AI will help you doing that job for you. For all the developers in the audience, you will directly recognize, ah, yeah, that's a classical regression test structure. And you can even use it for a test-driven development approach. That's quality assurance. Now, the next part is performance tracking. And <laughs> here's a feature many of you have asked for a long time. Paloa AMP comes from the beginning with an integrated analytics solution. So you can really monitor your, uh, your quantifiable KPIs and make sure you are delivering the experience you want. The last part is capacity management. Do you remember the last time when your company did a major marketing campaign and you knew, oh, there's quite some traffic coming in? How do we do this? How do we get enough agents uh, ready? And you had that stressful moment. That the good news is, this is a problem of the past. With Paloa, AI agents scale automatically. So you don't have to worry about capacity management again. 
But enough of talking. Let's jump into a further demo. And what could be more exciting than doing a demo myself? Ask a customer to do it. For that, I would like to invite Paul Herberts on the stage from the Bomania Insurance. Paul and team have built an AI agent with AMP that's live in front of customers and serves, serves customers day in and day out on the phone. So, please welcome Paul. Yeah, um, thank you and congratulations, Malta and Stefan. What an incredible job you and your team have done. I must say, I'm a little excited to stand here in front of you today. It feels like taking part in a historic moment. And at the same time, it is a great honor for me to speak to you, in, to speak to you on behalf of a great team at Barmenia and Palois. Michi, Moritz, Wolfgang, Justine, Lisa, Miao, and so many more. This is for you as well. Now, for the ones who don't know Barmenia, we are one of the largest insurance companies in Germany and offer a variety of insurance products to our customers. And we were fortunate enough to be one of the first pilot customers of Palua Amp. In fact, we were the first, we have been the first company ever to bring an AI, AMP AI agent in front of their customers. And this... <laughs> and this makes me really proud. And yes, we are a regulated insurance company <laughs> from Germany. Just to point that out again. Now, our vision at Parmenia is to take customer service to an all-new dimension. We dream of a technology that interacts so naturally and so intuitively that the boundaries between humans and machines completely disappear. And trust me, with Paloa Amp, we are closer to this dream than ever before. With AMP, we created our AI agent, Mina. We named her Mina after a famous sculpture in her hometown of Uppatal. And Mina is more than just an AI agent. She became a member of our team. And at the moment, her main skill is routing. She, and she is really good at it. And you can imagine finding out the right routing targets out of more than 50 routing targets isn't that easy. But to explain what makes AMP so incredibly good, I like to use the metaphor of onboarding a human agent in your contact center. It's a week-long process, which also makes it really costly. You have to teach them communication guidelines, such as active listening, responding to customer statements, showing empathy, and using clear language. And once their behavior is on brand, you have to explain a multitude of routing objectives and ensure that they are perfectly understood. And there's one more thing on it. Every single time a new employee joins, you have to repeat this process. And once the humans are fully onboarded, you have to, they have to find out routing objectives by asking the caller some questions, asking, what's the reason for your call? Again and again and again, eight hours a day. You can imagine this can be tiring from time to time. And Mina? She knows our 50-plus routing objectives in seconds and understands exactly what it takes to speak to our customers in our company's DNA. Mina is 24-7 available and takes every call as if it was the first of her day. While employees may reach the limits, Mina remains tireless. 
And she wrote thousands of calls a day with a precision and efficiency that is simply unparalleled. And now, let's have a look how we use Palua AMP for designing and managing MENA. It all started with a detailed briefing on her persona. We defined her role, her tone, and gave her some further instructions on how to interact with our customers according to our company's DNA. Then, we defined some phone settings, like her voice and some sounds. Uh, but now, let's have a look at her main skill, and that's routing. Here, you see our long, long list of routing objectives. We needed to describe Mina each of the 52 routing destinations. For example, like this one. And here we define the zip target she should forward the caller to. And we have parameters where we instructed Mina on how to fill these. For example, here you see a um, call summary, um, and we want Mina to fill it with a very short summary of the callers when Mina is handing it over to a human. Yeah, and actually, that's it. Once this was done for all destinations, we tested it in our staging environment with internal stuff, and then we shipped it to production. So Mina actually started taking calls on behalf of Barmenia. Sounds that easy, huh? <laughs> now let's have a look at some examples I picked. Yeah, here we see a conversation with a customer who is struggling with his activation code. For what? We don't know yet. Mina understands the intention, rephrases it in her response, and shows empathy about the issue while she's also asking the key question. Is it about the app or the online account? She simply works by the books. Perfect. And now let's take my favorite conversation. Here we have a caller who unfortunately lost their cat. Again, Mina understands the situations, expresses her condolences, and asks if the caller is the customer of the insurance. The caller seems confused. Of course not. My cat was insured, the caller says. And Mina understands better than the caller that a cat can sign an insurance plan. It must be human, which is why she asks again in a different manner and, uh, to be honest, more friendly than I would do it after such an answer. I understand that you'd like to cancel your cat's insurance. Are you the person who initiated the pet insurance? And for the Germans in the audience, look at the details. Mina is not confused by even a small transcription error. Instead of Kata, Palua transcribed Kata. But it still worked. I mean, these were just two conversations out of thousands that Mina is already having every day at Barmenia. And believe me, most of them are as great as these. Wolfgang said it's uh, better than watching uh, Frühstücksfernsehen. Yeah, and these are experiences that would never have been possible with a rule-based dialogue. The way Mina uses empathy, the way she's able to rephrase the reason for calls in her responses, the way she interprets unclear statements or ambiguities by asking counter-questions. This is simply groundbreaking technology, and it feels so human-like. And getting back to what Walter was saying earlier, it's all about the connection with our customers. And we ask each and everyone who interacted with, with Mina if she improved the connection to Barmenia. 
I think if you ask that question after your customers had interacted with a classic bot, I'm not sure anyone would say yes. In our case, with Palua Amp, 60%, and I have to repeat this because my pronunciation is not that good, 60% say that Mina improved their connection to Barmenia. So you see, implementing Palua Amp was really a huge success for us at Barmenia, and it was so easy. And this is also why I'm more than happy to announce that from today on, we are letting Mina handle 100% of all calls to Barmenia. Malte, congratulations again to you and your team. AMP is really a leap in technology. Thanks, Paul. Thanks to the team. Paul, Barish, Christian, Michi, Moritz, and the whole customer support team of Barmenia. What we have built with AMP is astonishing. After that great story, I'm happy to now announce Kerry, VP Conversational AI of Waterfield Tech. Waterfield Tech is one of the leading system integrators in the US, working for some of the biggest companies in the world. They are a thought leader in generative AI, and they're one of the early adopters and launch partners of AMP in the US. Kerry is one of the most knowledgeable people in conversational AI I have met so far, and that's why I'm very excited to welcome him here on stage. Kerry. Wow. What an exciting time to be in AI, in customer service, and customer experience. I've been in AI for 25 years. And to be honest, for the first 23 of those, there wasn't actually much intelligence in AI. But as we've seen, as we've heard, that's changed. For the last two years, me and my team have been exclusively building with Gen AI, more than 30 different use cases. We've built chatbots and voice bots covering retail, healthcare, finance, government. We have used dozens of different AI models. We fine-tuned them. We've used open source frameworks. We've built our own frameworks. And then I met Malta. It was like we'd been living parallel lives. <laughs> Me and my team had been stitching together whatever AI we could find to build these experiences. But Malta and his team had been building a platform. They'd been building AMP. So two months ago, we brought our teams together to focus on what I believe is one of the most challenging use cases, and one that epitomizes the difference of where we've come from and where I believe we're going to. The client we're working with makes hundreds of millions of outbound calls to their customers who owe them money, ask them to pay or arrange some kind of payment arrangement that works for them. They have thousands of humans across multiple contact centers having really difficult conversations every single day. But those conversations can only get so good before the agents get tired or frustrated or distracted or they find another job. And we all know what a big challenge churn is in the contact center. It really puts a cap on how good customer experience can get. 
Because if the agent churns after six or nine or 12 months, we've got to bring someone else in and train them again and to start all over again. AMP and the AI agents that we can build with it is the perfect solution for this challenge. When someone calls, the AI agents have the right context. What is the customer situation? What happened before? What other conversations have been had? The right approach, engaging, understanding, persuading. The right tone, forceful when necessary, and empathetic when that's appropriate. They never get tired or frustrated or embarrassed. They never say something insensitive. It's a game changer. But building with Gen AI is very different. We're not just deploying another piece of tech into the contact center. We are onboarding an AI workforce that needs leading and managing just like your human workforce does. I'd like to take a moment to just share some of the differences that me and my team have discovered on our journey to go from building legacy IVR and classic conversation AI applications for decades to the last two years exclusively focusing on Gen AI. First, and I think this is really important, we are not just building a better IVR, nor are we just trying to create cheaper humans. We want to create something that is better than both. So in the early days, use case discovery is really important. You've got to find that use case that really plays to the strengths of Gen AI. And when you find it, you don't write specs. You're not creating requirements. You're defining OKRs, objectives and key results that will let your AI agent and you know when it's achieved the outcome you were looking for. And we're not writing call flows. We're defining SOPs, standard operating procedures that explain how to get this task done in the processes that apply in that business uh, and, and the systems available to the agent. And we're not designing. We're doing prompt engineering. We're coming up with the instructions that will let the AI agent know how to get this task done, what to say, and how to say it. We're not even doing integration. We're building tools for our AI agents to use to, to connect with back-end services. And those tools need to translate what the back-end services provide into something that makes sense to the LLM. But I think by far the biggest difference is that we're not doing QA. We're not doing quality assurance like you know it. We're doing simulation and evaluation. The AI agents that we're creating can literally have an infinite number of different conversations. So testing a few happy th paths through the system isn't going to cut it. And it's exactly that that led to some of those hugely embarrassing early deployments where customers and some bad actors steered chatbots off course and create huge embarrassment for the likes of DPD and Air Canada. So as Malta uh, and Stefan have said, we've got to let the AI practice simulate thousands of interactions um, and then coach it and correct it to get it right. And I think this points to the solution for one of the thorniest issues, one of the issues that has put huge barriers up and is stopping many customers from deploying Gen AI, and that is compliance and risk and reputation. This isn't code. It's not always going to get it right, but that's okay. 
What we need to do is demonstrate that it performs at or above the performance of your human agents. We need to show that it's no more likely to step out of process, risk the brand reputation, or do something that's out of compliance. And we can do that by simulating thousands of interactions in AMP and using AI agents to evaluate those interactions and determine, did they meet the objectives and the key results, the OKRs that we unearthed right at the beginning of the process? In that way, we can quantify the compliance and reputational risks, and we can optimize and harden our solutions to the risks that bad actors present. We should be taking the first live calls with this solution in the next three weeks. And then we're going to begin a cycle of optimization that I am convinced is going to create agents that are better, faster, cheaper, more scalable, more consistent, and have much more personal interactions with our clients' customers than their agents do today. This isn't about better IVR. It's not even about cheaper agents. It's about something that can do better than either of those things. Human agent churn. And as I said, that puts a cap on the quality of experience. AI doesn't churn. It just keeps getting better. Human agents are too expensive to have spend hours poring over a specific issue with a customer in the previous conversations to have exactly the right conversation with your customers. But AI can. And with humans, we can't ensure that every call gets to the same agent that they spoke to before with whom they developed a relationship where they can pick up the conversation. But AI can. So with Gen AI, with AMP, it's no longer just about cost saving. This is about leveraging fast, scalable, abundant artificial intelligence, the likes of which we've never seen before. And what does this mean? This means you have the potential for huge competitive advantage. But I think it's a winner-take-all scenario. Because those businesses in contact center and outside who can best leverage this abundant form of intelligence will gain advantage. And they'll know that it was the AI that gave them that advantage. So with the extra time and space and resources that they get from their competitive advantage, they'll explore more new use cases, they'll push the boundaries further, they'll get more competitive advantage, more time, more space, even more resources, and they'll invest even more in AI. A classic exponential feedback loop. Winner takes all. So the question, of course, is how do you become the winner? I've covered some of this. The mindset, I think, is really important. This isn't just another piece of tech. You're onboarding an AI workforce that needs leading and managing, just like your human agents do. And I think this is great for all of the awesome contact center leaders and senior managers and duty managers and senior agents and AI trainers, because this is your moment to really make AI what it can be. Get great at hiring, training, coaching, and promoting your AI workforce. OKRs, not requirements. SOPs, not call flows. Simulation and evaluation, not QA. But we're not just deploying tech, but we do need the tech. And there, you have options. You could wait for your contact center vendor or CCAS provider to integrate Gen AI in a neat way, but you won't win with them. They're so far behind, it's too slow. 
You could roll your own. Nobody, not even Paloa, have a monopoly on AI. Anyone with a credit card can get access to the most incredible foundational AI models and secure, scalable cloud infrastructure. But as I've talked about, stitching this all together is really quite hard, and it just keeps changing. We've churned through so many models, so many frameworks, so many hosting providers. But if you are a tech-forward business and you've been building a team and an infrastructure for the last 12 or 18 months, this could be a good option for you. Or you could pick a suite, an AI suite focused on contact center like Paloa. There are others. Core AI, Cognigy, and Paloa have all raised between 50 and $100 million in the last six months to invest in contact center AI. It's not easy to pick between them. But we've picked Paloa. We picked Paloa because they have a laser focus on Gen AI. They have shed the baggage of IVR and classic conversational AI. I like them because of the team. I've had the honor and the privilege of working closely with the team here in Berlin several times and remotely for several months. They're a smart bunch. They really get it and a great, great culture. Congratulations. I like their PTU. They've got a dedicated infrastructure on Azure that means they get fast inference speed, fast guaranteed inference speed. And I like their relationship with Microsoft. I used to worry that if you used an AI platform like Paloa, you'd, you'd always be a few steps behind when the new models came out. But actually, I've changed my mind with the deep relationship that Paloa have with Microsoft. They're getting early access to the models. They had GPT-4.0 integrated within 48 hours. This is a high-stakes, winner-takes-all situation. Speed and momentum are going to be a deciding factor. So don't sweat the price. Don't sweat the features. Pick a team, a platform, and a partner that's going to let you start now, deploy rapidly, optimize quickly without sweating the technical details so you can be the ones to get to market fast. Gain that exponential advantage and you can be the individual, the team, or the business that takes all. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thanks a lot. We should have met earlier, uh, but now I'm really looking forward to everything we're going to build in the future. And I just want to encourage you all again. Start using generative AI today in order to get ahead of your competition. So, that's AMP. With AMP, the future is here. In the past, you talked about bots. Now, you're talking about AI agents. In the past, you used scripted answers. Now, it's about personalized conversation. In the past, you chose deflection. Now, it's all about having conversations. The more conversations you have, the more likely you will win. It's your, your chance to change the game in your industry. So the time is now to start building. And let's all together make people's life easier. And now, I want to take one minute to say thank you. I couldn't be more proud of everyone at Palua making AMP possible, making the impossible 
possible. There are a lot of people in our offices in Berlin and Munich watching this live stream. Everyone in the US will watch the recording after they wake up. This moment, Paluans, is for you. You're truly incredible. A big round of applause for everyone at Palua.